What's up? It is Be Wealthy Brett, and I'm back here to react to the latest thing which you see all the time is people hating on the culture of productivity. You know you are a lazy person, and there are thousands of people who want to tell you exactly how to fix that. But the truth is, you are probably just fine, and falling too far into the productivity rabbit hole will just make you lazier, more stressed, and poorer than when you started. Productivity. 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 I just want to say, because everyone else is saying, I got excited. I just want to get involved. It's full of an endless list of things to do. You spend a lot of time getting to a job, putting in your eight hours a day, if you are lucky, getting home again, and only then can you go shopping, clean your house, wash your clothes, pay your bills, cook, and help out your family with anything they need. Thanks to the rising cost of living and stack- Isn't that called life? Aren't all those things kind of essential? It's just called being a human. Uh, it's not a culture of productivity. You do have to get groceries and wash your clothes and pay your bills. I think it's called being a human being of living and stagnating wages, you might also want to include a side hustle or a business project in addition to everything else. Oh, and at some point, have some time to relax with friends and family or just get a good night's sleep. It's a lot, and us humans were not meant to be this switched on all the time. So to keep you on your grind and to help you feel a little bit less overwhelmed by everything that you need to do, there is a new movement of pseudo self-help gurus. These people promise to teach you simple tricks that conveniently fit into seminars, books, or 15-minute YouTube videos that will help you to better organize your life, stay motivated, and achieve your goals, even if your goal is not having to work two jobs. Now, before we go, I think this is where I'm going to start to disagree. I am a big believer in some of the tactics and tools and strategy. I think there are tools like Asana. Actually, I have a guy that I really like right now. It's called The book's called Coming Up for Air. Nick Sonnenberg wrote an incredible book tying in really the timeless principles of productivity to the technology of today. So I do believe in a better way to be more efficient. And so you put in the same amount of hard work and with the efficiency, you get a higher result. Let's just see which way this plays out. It sounds helpful or at the very least harmless, but following this advice could put you further behind for four reasons. The first reason is that it just doesn't work. Productivity brands and influencers have the opposite problem to Finfluencers, another group that promises to fix your finances instead of everything else in your life. Oh, this is a big one. That's the influencers versus the Finfluencers. Who will win? It's kind of like DC versus Marvel. It will be wild. Life. Good personal finance should be boring and simple. Save diligently, avoid high interest debt, maximize your income, and invest responsibly for long-term goals. It's so simple that everything you need to know about personal finance can fit on a post-it note and people have done it. That really is good advice. Again, this guy, this guy just nails common sense. That's a problem for personal finance influencers because they make a lot of money by posting weekly content and can't keep saying the same thing every week. So they end up making uninformed predictions or telling financial success stories that were more a product of luck than diligent financial planning. But we have already talked enough about- I just realized, um, am I a Finfluencer? Am I the only one that's legit? I don't know. Already talked enough about these guys before. Productivity influencers have the opposite problem. There is just too much to talk about and without knowing each and every one of their viewer situations, they can't come up with good suggestions. And uninformed advice is the same thing as bad advice. A report by Psychology Today found that so-called toxic productivity is one of the leading causes of diagnosed anxiety and depression. A strong focus on productivity also produces worse outcomes for everyone. A report by the Harvard Business Review studied employees who were fired for bad workplace behavior. The study found that a large share of those terminated employees were high performers in the roles, but brought down everybody that worked with them. A strong belief in their own... Is that because they were working hard or because they might have been just jerks? There's a group of human beings that are absolutely just jerks, but I would argue just as many people got fired that were terrible at their jobs that were also jerks. But there were people that were great at their job, they were awesome humans, and people that were bad at their job. They were awesome humans. I don't think just because you're a high achiever means you're a jerk. Own abilities, a strict adherence to their own routines, and a high expectation for everybody around them made them worse at delivering good results for the business. The researchers... If you were to take a moment here, though, and apply this to any sports team, how many of the top athletes were high maintenance, whether it's Jordan or Kobe or Shaquille and Tom Brady? They are high maintenance because they're a high performer. Did they hold their teams to a high standard? Yes, but people want to be on the winning team. 
there's a natural jealousy, and I think there's more of that today than ever to judge the success of others. But I don't think anyone wants to be on a losing or a mediocre team just because they're more comfortable. People want to play at the highest level of whatever it is that they do, whether that's in their home, community, or their church, or their business. Others found that a worker that had an intense focus on their own productivity might return $5,303 in cost savings to a company through increased output. Avoiding a toxic hire will net an estimated $12,489 because they collaborate more easily with coworkers and clients. And if you believe any of this math, I'll pay you $3,894. It's all, see, numbers like this in stats are all completely made up. There's, yes, there's a cost to a bad hire, the time, the soft costs, and, and things around that no question, the damage they could do to your business. But a top performer and trying to measure toxicity and how do you measure that in the workplace is completely impossible. Clients are less resistant to changes in the organization. An extreme focus on productivity in your personal life can also simply make you less productive as you spend all your time and effort hyper-optimizing every task in your life instead of just getting them done in a way that works for you. Despite the crazy amount of harm this can do, there are three terrible reasons why the cult of productivity isn't going anywhere. The number of hours Americans work has gone down over the decades according to the OECD. But at the same time, people report having less time to themselves, and there are three reasons for this. Technology has made our work easier, but it has also made it easier to be at work. A 2017 Gallup survey of 15,000 American workers found that 43% of people spent at least some of their personal time working remotely. No follow-up studies have been... Interesting study update in 2024, some of the employees spent personal time while at, while at work. Interesting fact. No follow-up studies have been done, but that figure is likely to rise with the mass adoption of work from home from 2020 until lately. Employers are also demanding more unpaid overtime for non-hourly workers, and these requests are often coming at odd times, reducing the amount of quality, uninterrupted free time where workers are allowed to totally disconnect from their job. The psychologist Adam Alter said that if you carry around a phone that your boss or team can message or call you on at any time, you probably haven't had real free time to yourself for years. The second reason is that people who work are working less, but more people are working. A stay-at-home partner who takes care of chores, children, and other tasks is now a luxury that most people can't afford. A growing number of people are also remaining single for longer, so people have to do their jobs and their chores when they get home without the help they would have gotten in the past from more traditional family units. The third reason is simply that there is productivity causing people to be single? Simply that there are more distractions. When was the last time you felt bored? Probably a long time ago, right? Because today, right there in your pocket, is a phone that gives you access to games, messages, and apps that are literally designed from the ground up to give you dopamine on demand and are hyper-optimized to keep your attention. Companies and people pushing the hashtag hustle mindset have undoubtedly created these problems, and they are also cashing in on the opportunity to sell you the solution. And that's the third reason why the cult of toxic productivity has grown so large. It's too profitable. According to Precision Reports, a market research firm, the global market for productivity apps was worth $9.42 billion in 2022 and is expected to grow by 9.2% per year until 2028. In addition to this market, there are also people selling books, courses, consultations, and tutorials on avoiding the world's distractions and squeezing the most out of your day. It's a big market for one simple reason. People who have decided that they want to be more productive are high-intent customers, and they are willing to spend a lot of money on a good solution because they think of it as an investment rather than a purchase. If someone could give you an app or a course that would let you focus for longer and build out a side business that doubled your monthly income, of course you would pay a lot for that. People seeking out ways to maximize their productivity are also on average wealthier as people who are into self-improvement and are short on time often are. This means that people can make millions of dollars very quickly if they can amass an audience and convince them that they have the secret to maximizing productivity. I am going to stop short of calling these a get-rich-quick scheme-style grift, because I do believe that the most popular personalities in the space like Ali Abdal, Alex Hermosi, and even Gary Vee really do have good intentions with their audience, and they don't intend any harm. Some not every influencer in every area is bad. I gotta say, I've learned a lot from Grant Cardone, I've learned from Alex Hermosi, and I've learned from Ali Abdul most recently. And so, Hermosi's book that he wrote, $100 Million Leads, I highly encourage you to read it, it's awesome. That book though, yes, while it offers productivity, it actually offers you the opportunity to make a lot of money from what he teaches you. I can tell you from that book specifically, I've probably made several hundred thousand dollars 
from specific techniques from the book. So to say all oh, that's productivity and investing in it's bad, what he said two sentences ago was that the people that invest in themselves in productivity, whether that works or not, earn more than people that don't. But people that invest in themselves and self-help always get ahead. Is there a better way to do everything we're doing? There is. There's always a way to get more efficient. So paying money that actually saves time makes a lot of sense. There are no costs in life. There's only good and bad investments. And a lot of times it's up on us to figure out whether the investment we made was good or bad. Any harm? Some other self-improvement personalities don't care as much and just want to get you to buy their course by any means necessary. But even these good guys still have something to sell you. It's a classic strategy of, hey, look at me, I am rich and successful, and you could be too, if you do this thing that I am selling. A video about how someone made $10 million a year and a breakdown of their revenue sources might But what about the people that sell a course or a tape or a thing on what they did do that they sell to others that works and people get that result? Again, it's like going to a restaurant and you have a bad meal and you say, I'm never going to eat food again. I don't know that that's the same thing. People teaching, would you rather learn from someone that wasn't successful on how they think it would be like if they were successful? That's what most people teach on. I think at, the key is to verify, does the person you're listening to have the expertise specifically in the thing that you want to master? And it's got harder and harder to verify that, but there are ways. And I think if you can get close enough to that person, you can ask those questions and figure it out for yourself. And that's the journey we're all on. Might genuinely be made with the best of intentions of transparency, but it also serves as a demonstration of how well their advice has worked for them and how it could work for you too. In the interest of my own transparency, I have made the same kind of video because I thought it was interesting and I thought it would get views, but I don't have a course on how to run multiple businesses or get big on YouTube. Some of these tools these people and companies are selling are totally free, but some can cost thousands of dollars. And with an audience that is so intent on changing their life for the better, it's not unusual for people to take on credit card debt to attend a mindset conference or buy a course that they think will change their life. Now, if you pick up some tricks that help you stay on top of your meetings or just feel less stressed about your everyday chores, that's great. And if that's worth investing some money, go ahead. But there wouldn't it always be worth investing your money in those things? I feel like, I feel like those things are awesome. Head. But there aren't millions of people watching this with the goal of minor improvements. People are expecting something much bigger that simply can't be bought. Working out how to stay focused for every hour of the day is probably not going to radically change your life. In my career as an investment banker, I got to work directly with hundreds of very successful company founders that were raising hundreds of millions of dollars for their businesses. All of them were very busy people, but none of them tried to optimize every hour of the working day or work 100 hour weeks to make their business a success. It's also not fair to even compare regular people to highly successful business people either, because they often have assistants and other staff to take care of them, so even if they are spending long hours in the office, they have everything else in their life taken care of. And that's the third reason why falling into the productivity rabbit hole can leave you much worse off in the But isn't that the point of becoming successful? So you could have other people free you up to live a better life? So you could do the things you wanted to do and ultimately back your hours down? Yeah, I think that is the in the point he's making the problem was the entire reason why I did it. Productivity rabbit hole can leave you much worse off in the long run, which is that you are probably wasting your time. This works in two ways, so let's call them reason 3A and reason 3B. The first way this will end up wasting your time is that after setting up calendars, reminders, journals, meditation sessions, attending seminars, and watching productivity content, you have probably wasted more time than you will ever save with a simple plan that you work out as you go along. Yeah, don't go do all these things thinking you're going to get better at stuff. Stay just like you are. Smart. You go along. Reason 3B is a little bit more interesting though. Being productive is not the same as being busy, but if you're focused on not wasting any of your time, you are more likely to divert your attention to things that aren't going to do you any good. A survey conducted by 1,989 office workers in the United Kingdom found that the average person was on task for just 2 hours and 53 minutes a day. Trying to optimize that time to get more done in a day is only going to result in you being given more work to do, which is great for the company you work for, but doesn't help you much. Strong performance is important for career progression, but being the guy that does the work of three normal coworkers isn't the right way to show you're the right person for a promotion. Being too good at your- What is the right way to show you're uh, the right person for a promotion? I think showing that you could do the work of three people would be an excellent way to display that. Being too good at your job is also one of the leading reasons that managers have given for not promoting staff because they will be too hard to replace. 
even if you are a business owner and you do financially benefit directly from every additional bit of work you get done, the mindset that a lot of productivity gurus preach is not going to make your business sustainable or scalable. The cult of productivity is weirdly split on this. Some people advocate working 100 weeks until you are a billionaire and only then are you worthy of a day off. And some argue that if you are getting paid based on how many hours you work, you are a loser that can't properly delegate. There is no single right way to run a business, and owners usually do work more hours than their employees. But nobody can produce good quality work 100 hours every week, and not every business owner can or wants to delegate their jobs to a team, taking us back to the problem of specific advice for a broad audience. If it wasn't clear by now, it's okay to not be productive. Comparing yourself to people online who are outstandingly lucky or simply make it their career to talk about how organized they are is not going to do anything good for you. If you don't really care about how much more money you can make your employer, then take it easy and watch this video on the rise and fall and rise again of unions. They are the reason that you can get away with watching this video at work like you probably are right now. If you are stuck in an open office plan and need to keep your screen looking busy, then you can sign up for my totally free e Wow, well, I gotta take it all back. I was, uh, I, was, I was this guy's fan right till the start of this video. God, his last video that I did was awesome. Uh, to say that I disagree with the entire premise of everything he said is, is pretty close to the truth. Uh, believe that you can never get better. Everyone can get better. If you're out there and you want to get better at a given skill set, you can. Working all the time and working 24 hours a day, no. Working hard, getting better at your work, and getting more accomplished should be the goal of all of us. So you can get to the point where you can have the luxuries in your personal life and the things you really want. It is all possible. It doesn't have to be a grind. And never do we bring up the point that the highly productive people, there's some of us out there that actually love what we do. It doesn't feel like work and we actually get the joy to go do the thing we do every single day. So your life, your future and living big doesn't have to come at the expense of everything else. You can have a really big life. You can have great vacations. You can have great family. You can have great relationships and you can have a great time in the work that you do. Come back and check us out. I'll see you in our next video.